So I've got Bet Angel in practice mode, which is where I suggest you have it most of the time until you feel more comfortable with exactly what you're attempting to achieve. And I'm just looking for an opportunity here to get a few scalps through. So if you look at the traded volume on this particular runner, you can see that it's at the lower end of its traded volume. So if the market starts to move significantly one way or the other, we should be able to see that effect take place. But by going in at a price at which nobody else has been willing to trade at, it's probably a reasonably safe bet. If I go in and click on the chart, you can see the market's a little bit erratic. You know, I don't particularly like that. So you can see generally, however, that it's gone down to four, bounced up, down to four, bounced up, down, and so on and so on. So we're proposing that the price is going to bounce up again. So, you know, we seem to have missed that opportunity at the bottom of the market, which is a little bit annoying. Um, but you can see that, you know, it's traded in the last 60 seconds, it's traded around this level within the market. And over the much longer term, it's quite thin, the amount of money that's been matched much further up here. Uh, so there probably still is an opportunity. But what we're going to do is we need to keep an eye on all of the other runners in this market. There seems to be a fair amount of activity on the front three, not so much on this one on the far right here. But let's um, pop a trade in here because I think maybe the price will come back down. But we can sort of tell that, that the price maybe would come back down if these start to move out. Uh, so that would that would help us on that particular occasion. You can see here that um, this trade doesn't look like it's going to work out perhaps. Nope. So I've just scratched that trade basically because we didn't want to expose ourselves to any particular level of risk. So we'll try again. We'll go in at four and a half. I'll put an order in here as well. Looks like 4.4 is going to get matched first. Bit, bit of support's come in for that. So, okay, so that hasn't uh, immediately worked out. We're still waiting for money to get matched at 4.5. So what's going through your mind at this particular point is, will the price get back to 4.5? or is it headed much lower? So you start turning your attention to where the orders are matching um, in the center here. And, you know, is it flashing mainly green or is it flashing mainly red? And so on and so forth. And that'll just give you a clue as to whether the price is about to nudge up. It's definitely not going to go up there now. So we may as well exit this trade at this point. So you can see big, big slug of money, absolutely nothing we could do about that. And it's better that we just dump our position. Now that money's gone, let's wait for the price to come back at 4.4 and we'll see if we can get nudged up from here. Now can you see the price and the favorite is drifting? So the fact that the price and the favorite is drifting is going to apply pressure on the price to come down here. So that's the sort of trade we want to do really. We don't really want to do a trade on the price going up. Although it looks like this is going to get matched actually, so we'll be fine here. This is coming in, so can you see the interaction between these two? So this one's drifting. Uh, this one's coming in and maybe actually we're in, in a roughly safe area here. If we want to and we are uncertain, you know, if you look at these two, these two are relatively stable. The second and the fourth on the ladder are generally bouncing around each other. So actually it doesn't look too bad. Um, but what we'll do is we're going to pop in another order here. We're going to cancel that. The reason I'm doing that is to give myself a bit of breathing space if the price moves down. That's really moving. That's really on, on a big move at the moment. And this is going in the opposite direction. Can you see how they're interacting? Here's a little trick for you. Um, if we put going one over here, we can put Johnny's legacy over here. See how those two are interacting with each other and still continue to trade these two. There you go. Tiny amount of money at 4.2. So I reckon that we will get matched at 4.3. I don't think that's real. I've seen this guy coming and going in the market. There you go. Am I a genius or what? Or, or am I just in this market so often that those sort of things are easy to spot? Um, the favorites topped out. If we look at his chart, the um, in fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this onto ladder one, and we can just show you this and how this is uh, how this has happened. It was bouncing around three and a half. Price has gone out to about four, and you can see it's just coming back down again. So if we look at our friend here, last 60 seconds, most of the volume has been traded within this range, um, which is quite a tight range, actually. So we're going to stay within this range and um, see if we can trade effectively. Need a little bit of money to come in at 4.3. Trying to decide which way 4.3 is going to go. I don't know at the moment, is my honest answer. 
need some support on one side or the other. We'll put it over here. Didn't quite get it. We're a little bit delayed, but I think it'll it'll pop back down again. Um, there's 500 here, only 300 here. So if anybody takes a reasonable amount there, there you go. And uh, now I've got to look for my next position. So we can see it's bumped up against 4.4 repeatedly. I'm going to pop an order up there. This is headed back out to 4 again. We'll see if it bounces this time. Um, I forgot to close my position here because I was too busy pointing over here for instructional purposes. I'm going to put an order back up here. It's all a question of whether we think this price um, will get taken out, which is what I'm basically saying I think will happen. We could do with this stopping at 4s and coming back down again because that will help push this price out. This is going to get matched any second now. Need a little bit more money at 4.2 and then this will get matched. All I can do is wait. And wait. Sometimes trading is like this. Here we go. Any second now. And it's gone. And we can now put a new order here as well because we've got some money waiting there. It's just a legacy of that position we put in where we said this was likely to be the top of this current traded range. And uh, this money's getting taken a little bit too keenly on here, so I'm going to get ready to scratch this trade if need be. Money's getting taken at 4.3, that looks a little bit more comfortable. It's been taken, so we now look at 4.4 and wait for that to be taken. Come on. My eyes are going funny from staring at 4.4. I've got an eye on the um, far left as well. I'm looking up here and just seeing that that did again bounce off of that level at 4. Oh, this is ridiculous how long it's taken for this to get matched. It's amazing actually. <laughs> I could die and be buried before this uh, order gets matched. Surely it's got to go now. Surely. Mm. We'll have a quick look at the charts anyway while, while we're waiting for that to do its business. So yeah, that did actually peak slightly over 4 on its run up on the last occasion. And still we are not matched. Nobody really wants to get so uh, much money matched. You can see how thin the amount of money is that's getting matched at that level. We're okay, we can hold our position here. We could take it back out at uh, 4.3 but it's been there so long it's bound to get matched sooner or later. There we go. There's another trade through uh, the market. But when you're trading like this, basically that's what you're trying to do. You're trying to nip in and out of a very, very short period. You're trying to avoid these ones that are flying around all over the place. You're just looking for something that's more or less moving around the same point. So we identified uh, this selection and that selection were doing exactly that. And that's why uh, we traded them and that's why we avoided these two. But we did keep an eye on these because that gave us a clue as to how we thought that these would behave. But you can see that these two were interacting and these two were out on their own and really couldn't care less. The volume was slightly lower on these, um, which didn't particularly help us getting our order filled, but it made for a much safer trade. So we did four trades of £10 each. That gave us a gross profit of four. Um, and I would just go up here to click on that to hedge it. Or if you want to display on the ladder the hedged profit that you can take, you can do that. And you can see it displays that value there. Uh, but typically the way I trade is I trade in and out as many times as I can and at the end of my trading sequence I will just click up here and hedge that position across the entire market. Um, so 93p doesn't seem much um, but that's what we've got overall and that was using a £10 stake and we did the same trade basically four times in succession and that gives us a 10% return on the stake that we're using which is basically um, I think a pretty good return overall and your objective when trading in this manner is to get as many trades as you can through and increase that percentage so that uh, when we go into the next race or the next day you can just increase your stakes a little bit and that soon begins to build into much higher levels.